My name is Two Days in Rosity, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Alright, A15. So what, we've just got the final five in the slog left, and then the rest of the achievements. I want to take a break and do the achievements. No, I'm kind of appreciating the rate at which things are going currently. Random rare. Take a chance of not being able to make it work. No, I'm taking the 100 gold. We'll go to this early shop, pick up a card that's hopefully going to help us get through here. Uh, so the Bash Strike kills the backliner, defending me for six. If I used only a defend there, I would have defended for five. Sometimes aggression is better than defense. Not always, though. Uh, yeah, I'll take an early copy of Anger. It's like a bunch of free damage for us. Yes, I know it's not free, and to refer it, uh, refer to it that way is a little bit irresponsible, and it kind of muddles the other times that I refer to other things as free. Um, but it's it's going to be extremely useful for us. We'll take a shrug it off. It's just another value pick. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go up. Ooh, even more gold. All right. We find here... There's the pocket watch. Whenever you play three or less cards during your turn, draw three additional cards at the side of your next turn. That's going to be really good for getting us back into that anger really quickly. But this Juggernaut is huge. Super early, and then I can take a true grit and start building around it. Yeah, we're doing it. I have to remove a defend, otherwise the Gremlin Knob kills me. I can't take that, otherwise the Gremlin Knob kills me. <clears throat> There are a myriad things I cannot take for the Gremlin Knob. And show Fury onto me. Uh, Alright, Anger being at the bottom of the first deck is not great for us. Still, we do get to defend and deal damage at the same time, so I can't be too, too mad about it. I can definitely be some mad about it, though. Anger at the bottom of the deck again? All right. Okay. Anyway, I just get to full defend this turn. No, but I do get to kill. Uh, Sundial, every three times you shop your deck, gain two energy as well as a Sentinel. Second wing... Uh, exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Gain five block for each card exhausted. That is a bunch of triggers of Juggernaut. I'm gonna actually take that. This is not a deck I've built before. I'm interested to see how this goes. Immolate. Oh, what a huge pickup here. What an absolutely massive pickup. Okay, so we can say the Immolate True Grit next hand, I guess. No, I'll shrug it off. Neat. All right. Should have defended first there. Could have done one more damage to a different target. In the right circumstances, at least. I hate that Second Wind and Immolate were on the bottom of the deck here. Both were excellent draws earlier. Question card. Future card reward screens have one additional card to choose from, as well as Body Slam makes sense in this deck. Matroshka, the next in the non chest, we want to contain two relics. Uh, I think I'm going to dodge these final two elites. We have a relatively good deck right now. Basically, it's just can we not screw it up, please? Goodbye, cultist. Hello. Ooh, ghostly armor. Giant amount of block to gain. Second like another card removal. Relatively early, yes, but we can, with that body slam, tend more towards defense and have it just translate into our offense. Oops. 
love to just be able to play the juggernaut that turn. Come on. Please stop hitting me so hard. I want to live. Regen potion. That's going to be pretty helpful for it, as well as that shrug it off. I'm probably going to be in this fight for a while, so let's regen potion up. Okay. So next immolate is the kill on both of these targets for us. They're not going to make me frail, though, in the meantime. It's okay, though, because I do get to kill the backliner. And even the frontliner, they're beautiful. Get myself a reasonable amount of HP out of it. Move on as quickly as possible. The body slam has already been upgraded. Now Juggernaut needs to be upgraded, but Immolate needs to be upgraded first, actually. It's going to be more important in this fight and more important for a lot of the fights of next floor. Burning pack, that strike. There's the Emulate and the Juggernaut. Most of the rest of my deck is just blocks, so I can take the Emulate. I wanted one of those set up in the first turn. I'm glad I eventually did get one. Sweet. Pretty reasonable amount of block with that turn. And he's not split yet. We need a very lucky hand here to want to split. Well, you don't want to split there, but it's still probably responsible to. Managed to get Immolate in the absolute next hand. That's really good. But if we get like a real... If we get like a real whiff on drawing our uh, body slam at the right time, we could have some serious issues here. Okay. So 21, 9, and 12, that's enough to kill the frontliner. With weakness, this means a strike or an anger is enough to kill that acid slime. Alright, that spike slime just attacks, so it's less likely to be attacking next turn. There's no guarantees, but less likely. Alright. We can finally put Barricade in a deck without immediately removing it. Dark Embrace Demon form Berserk and Fiendfire. We'll take Fiendfire here just as damage dealer. And then Cursed Key is the best energy relic we can pick up in that position. Sweet! Alright, so the goal here ultimately is Juggernaut and then Block. But in the meantime, Fiendfire. Uh, I'll Swift Potion here. So that Fiendfire is now 7x7. Seven 7x7 seven. Seven seven is... 7x7 okay. seven seven is 49, right? 42 is 7x6. Yeah, so 49. Um... So only if I cast it right now can I actually kill anything. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't include itself with the counter there, so... Only doing it that way did I actually kill an enemy that turn. I felt like that was important. Alright, 
right, go. Mugger, hello. Ooh, spot weakness is always appealing, but I'm going to take the shrug it off. I'm going to try and lean into the deck that we've already got. Upgrade all strikes and defends, or remove one. Upgrade all strikes and defends. Those defends being upgraded is actually huge. Ooh. Yeah, that'll give me some time to set up. The deck can't get much thicker beyond this point, though, because if it does, we're in danger. Just lose, uh, leave immediately, though. Alright. Unfortunately, now we're frail, so things get a wee bit rougher for us. But at least we've got intangibility for two turns. We get to set up our Juggernaut. Could be a lot worse. Right. Rage is the ability to get a lot of block suddenly. We have a couple of attacks in this deck. We don't have enough attacks. If we had another Anger, then I might actually take Rage so that I can generate a bunch of blocks suddenly uh, to trigger Juggernaut a lot, but I don't think in this position it's right for us. Is getting out Juggernaut more important here? Or is defending and body slamming? Getting out Juggernaut is actually more important. Of intangibility for next turn. Hopefully they're all attacking. Not all of them, but reasonable amount. I don't have barricade here, so ah, never mind. Whew. Turns up at the exact right time. Get him, boys. And that's the Gremlin leader down. Uh, or a Calcum if you end your turn without blocking six block, as well as ferrying a bottle, as well as another body slam. One of 20 cards to add to the deck. Yeah, that's really bounty and trench. Huge. Absolutely huge for us. Uh, now we just need to keep safe, basically. So, impatience is pretty good, except for the fact that we have the two copies of Immolate in the deck. If you have no attacks in your hand, draw a card. Uh, we'll take it, actually. It's an optimistic take, but it's pretty good. Uh, and then we'll take another True Grit. Those True Grits also both need to be upgraded as soon as possible. I'm going to dodge some Elite so that I can get some upgrades here. Uh, I still have to open these because of the Matroshka, so it's really important. Uh, Gremlin Horn, whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card, as well as Letter Opener. Whenever you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. That's actually really important for us because we do play a lot of skills in a single turn. Uh, upgrading the Entrench and then two... Other cards that I've slightly forgotten. Please don't burn the bur uh, body slam. Eee, good. Uh, true grits. There we go. What's the true grits? Well, we're almost gonna die here. Thankfully, death ain't so bad for us. Means we get to come back once. Ah. Fine, we'll finish the fight and live. Ugh. Huh. Don't want to die here? Trigger the fairy in a bottle? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, it gave me the max HP first, so I ended up living. I didn't want that. <laughs> oh, no. You have to get back. I have to get back to a reasonable amount of HP. Oh, the thing is, if these apparitions aren't upgraded, then I'm going to need all of my defense upgraded so that I can actually stand a chance against the... Uh, against the final boss here.
All right. All right. I'm playing a bit risky. Snake plant. Wow. Well, at least we're not dead this turn. Okay, I only need to play one of these apparitions. Only one of them will actually have any impact here. Reason because the enemy's not attacking this turn. Told ya. Alright, hopefully that entrench turns up. It did turn up, but it's not going to be enough, is it? You are kidding me. It's one damage short. That sucks. So we don't die to the first hit. We die to the second hit. We get brought back with four HP and then we die to the next hit. One HP. So I wanted to live through this fight, get the six HP healing out of this, have the benefit of the second body slam upgraded, then rest in this fight, rather than rest in this fight, possibly lose my HP and end up going into the final fight with only the fairy bottle. I felt like the second body slam upgraded was uh, desperately needed. Uh, the apparitions being upgraded would have been nice, but unfortunately we had a lot of cards that really needed upgrades at the right time. Um, if I'd taken fewer cards on the first floor, specifically if I didn't take second wind, uh, maybe if I didn't take one of these shrug it offs, uh, maybe if I didn't take one of these true grits, then I would have been in a much better position here. It's real, real shame. So weakness and frailty double screwed us there because the weakness prevented us from getting enough block and then the damage that we deal is equal to our block, which didn't help because it was also weakened. So I lost a significant amount of my damage output on that turn. Lame. That's okay though. Uh, remove two cards. Enemies in the next three combats have one HP. Uh, possibility of sniping out one elite. Not a guarantee, though. Definitely no path for two, though. Um, I'm gonna remove two cards. Let's go strike and defend up now. I wonder if I want to go to an early shop for another chance to remove another card. Ugh, lame. So 18 HP on this last means that I needed three strikes in the hand in order to kill it. This turn to prevent its incoming damage, but unfortunately obviously didn't have that. If they're on 17, then you can do the bash strike. I've already removed a strike from the deck, but the deck is relatively thin we are going to be able to pick up a lot of strikes. I may want to go to this shop, just pick up a strike, go to this, pick up another strike in the next shop. Like... Ooh. Apotheosis is hard to turn down, but... Take a single copy of Shrug It Off, actually. Just a nice value pick. Strikes are all common, so they shouldn't cost enough to actually make me regret that decision. And getting some extra strikes early is really important. Ten strike, thank you. Lame. Wait. I'm actually going to take an armament in this deck. I very, very, very rarely do. But I'll take it in this deck because this deck's identity is... Perfected Strike, and Perfected Strike is a deck that obviously tends towards bloat. Because you want to put a bunch of cards in it, right? So it feels like it's the right deck where Armaments is actually going to be impactful rather than a detriment, you know, what, two hands in. Do I bash, then armaments, or armaments, then bash? So if I armaments, then bash, I wake up the enemy this turn. If I bash, then armaments, I don't wake up the enemies this turn. I set up for a better next turn. Yeah. 
It's at the cost of upgrading that bash, but I still think it's going to be worth it here. Ooh, armaments bash now? Yeah. Get that vulnerability extended basically for as long as I possibly can here. Uh, this is very much just going to be kind of like, oh, do I want it to just be aggression? No, I should play the perfected strike, especially while the enemy is vulnerable whenever I get it. And that's going to be the log bullet down. Come on, give me a strike. Regal Pillow, whenever you rest, heal an additional 15 HP, as well as a no. No strikes there. How disappointing. I shouldn't need to take damage in this combat, especially because of the two shrug it offs. Basically, our entire defense budget. Goodbye, Luda, and hello. Dual Wheel does make more strikes in my deck, but. Uh, Varshot started each combat with one strength. Obviously, really good with the deck that intends to use a bunch of strikes. And right, I'm going to get a bunch of upgrades here as well. Oh, also the Emerald Elite this floor, but mostly a bunch of upgrades. On. Oh, I really need some more strikes, video game. Kind of relying on you here. Alright, backliner is well within my ability to kill this turn with a good draw. That'll do some. I love a lot of upgrades that turn as well. Loving it. Probably not going to be able to kill the frontliner sentry next turn, so instead I'm going to set up for killing the backliner in two turns time. Yep. Looks like I was right about that as well. And yeah, I could kill this turn. Beautiful. I could not have, could not have handled that better though. Quite pleased with myself, frankly. And this is an Emerald Delete as well, and it's just going down like paper. Did I never use the Dex Potion in the final fight of the... No, wait, I totally did. Never mind, I'm fine. Whew! I thought I just realized something about last episode. Uh, Emeralds... Emerald key, yeah, nice pickup. Um, we'll drop the ancient potion for the fairy in a bottle here. It's good strike. Thank you for getting me another strike there. I'm gonna want all of these defensive cards upgraded, especially the cards that draw. Specifically because if it's a draw card, I want to play it before I play armaments. Except one damage here just to set up for the easier kill on the backliner when it's necessary. Which is now. Twin strike. Oh, those twin strikes are all really good. They're actually a really, really reasonable amount of damage, especially with Vajra. And when upgraded, and we obviously have the armaments in the deck to help us with that. Okay. So I can split the enemy this turn, but I... Yeah, I'd be very surprised if that turned out to be our best move. We're going to want to wait for a better turn. Like this. Hell of a lot of outgoing damage there. Not even weakens this turn. Beautiful. So damn peaceful and serene.
No, it's fine. Next hand should have the perfected strike. We got the kill there. Neat. Uh, da -da -da. bludgeon, juggernaut, fiend, fire. I'll take the juggernaut just for some extra damage, and I'm not going to build around it. Uh, fusion hammer. Gain energy at the start of your turn. You can only smith at rest sites. Am I okay with that? Juggernaut being not smithed is rough, but having the extra energy with this deck in particular is huge. Also, I don't want to transform three of my cards, because what? I transform my defense, I don't get any defense left in the deck, and then I'm dead. Or I transform my strikes, and then I completely invalidate the archetype that I'm building, and I'm dead. A lot of my hypothetical scenarios end up with me dead. I wonder why that is. I should probably see someone about that again. All right. Defense. Ask and ye shall receive. Ooh. Providence right there. Cool place in Rhode Island. Uh, nothing else I really need to worry about on this turn. Yeah, perfected strike follow up for the kill. No, I don't I don't want to take any risks with that, thank you. Uh by the way, just in case you're unfamiliar or haven't seen that event before. I'm gonna tell you what happens in that event. Because a lot of people will ask, or rather it'll occasionally be asked. Uh hey Raps, why did you choose to just leave and take damage when you could have just taken money? Uh, because until you choose to leave that event, it just keeps going. So eventually you will just die. It's metal as hell, dudes. Or rather, metal as hell folk and metal as hell y'all. Don't need to be using exclusively gendered language. Definitely follow up with the Twin Strike afterwards because I don't want the two stacks of Malleable to stack upon one another. So if I Twin Strike first, it would have had nine block and completely invalidated the following strike. I do want Ghostly Armor to still... Never mind. I immediately disregarded my own advice. I 100% deserve that for that. Is the weakness bash strike wasn't going to be enough to kill that turn, I'm pretty certain. Cool. Spot weakness makes sense for this deck, and it doesn't desperately need an upgrade. Basic strike out of there. Basic strike, basic, uh, basic defense, sorry. Love to make the enemy vulnerable there, but without the upgrade on that vulnerability, it's not super worth it. Oh. Look at all that damage. Lovely. Buy a book of stabbing and hello, preserved insect. Enemy in elite fights have 25% less HP. Another copy of Spot Weakness. Probably the last one that I want to pick up here. Definitely fight. There's no way I'm giving them all my gold. Okay. Super important that we're able to kill Be uh, Bear next turn. I set up on it this turn. Beautiful. 12 incoming. Yeah, that should be totally manageable. Alright, we're fine. And we managed to get the red mask. At the start of each combat, apply one week to all enemies. Huge fan of that. Oh, another shrug it off or a twin strike. Pre-upgraded shrug it off is huge. That defense is just it's super important. I can't take it over a twin. Uh, I can't take a twin strike over it, rather. I actually may want to go for the full fight here. 
This is a far cry from how I usually deal with this event. But I've been doing it a lot recently, and I've been having some real, real good times. And here I even have the Regal Pillow to help me rest afterwards, as well as the Fairy in a Bottle to help the fight not be awful. Yeah, Juggernaut seems like it's probably not going to be too useful for us here. Eight damage, and then murder. I mean, come on. Eight damage. I even heal six of it back up. Peace wipe, you can now remove cards from your deck at rest sites. So unlikely we do that. Kunai, every time you play three attacks in single turn, gain one dex. Actually, quite likely we do that consistently. Take another twin strike. Uh, Art of War, if you don't play any attack during the turn, gain additional energy next turn. Not super relevant for us. We will avoid that. Oh, this sucks. So I desperately wanted this event because if it gives me the Necronomicon, double perfected strike is insane. But if I take this event, I'm almost certainly dead in the elite combat upcoming. I can't do it. I'm so mad that I can't do it as well. I'm vibrating with anger right now. Would I have died that turn? Four damage, had 19 coming in. Uh, 19 coming in, so... Yeah, I would have died that turn. I would have healed back up with the Varian Bottle. And I would have healed back up six HP, and then I would have been able to kill the Slaver in the front line this turn, I think, right? Yeah. And then I would die to the t uh, Taskmaster this turn. Because I needed all of my energy to get that kill anyway. Yep, so it was the right decision. I'm sad about it, though. Or Calcum, if you end your turn without block gain 6 block, as well as... Iron Wave is actually really good because of the Kunai. It's going to be providing a lot of block for us, as well as incrementing the Kunai. Uh, it can be thought of as kind of like a faux cloak and dagger. A little less effective, obviously. Uh, significantly less effective, obviously. Uh, fossilized Helix. Prevent the first time in each combat you would lose HP. That is huge. So is the Sling of Courage, but the Fossilized Helix is actually much more important. Um, after that, I really don't want a card remove. If only I could also get Omomori. I think the Fossilized Helix is worth it, though. It prevents so much damage. Like, a truly astronomical amount of damage. Great. Hell yeah, get that extra point of dex. Body slam actually does kind of make sense here. So I'm effectively just saying, hey, Gremlin Leader in the back line, you are now deceased. Just wanted to set it up, knowing that I could kill it next turn. All right. Blue Candle, unplayable curse cards can now be played. When you play a curse, lose one HP and exhaust it, as well as oh, second Juggernaut. We're not even playing the first Juggernaut yet, and definitely not Entrench. would need to be upgraded. Wow. This sucks. So take six damage this turn. Had to draw the perfected strike. I just shouldn't have drawn. I should have known that was going to happen to me. That's not a case of unlucky. That's a case of I made my own bad luck there by making a bad decision. It's important to be able to tease those apart, even if I don't always necessarily attribute each of them perfectly correctly all of the time. Again, should have drawn first there. Would have known better. Goodbye, Mystic, and hello. Hello. Mm. 
Pre-upgraded Wild Strike? Yeah, I'm actually going to take it just for some more instantaneous damage. Uh, it's important that I rest here, I think. Thank you for the Regal Pillow helping us on that rest. It's more important that I set up than it is that I start executing and dealing a bunch of damage right now. Alright, well... No need to bother attacking this, uh, defending this turn. Mm -hmm. The Aura Calcum blocks for six, the Iron Wave only blocks for four. pretty pleased with how that went. We've got the Juggernaut out. We've got two spot weaknesses off. I could split the enemy this turn if I wanted to even. No, I want to do that next turn. So I don't want to split them this turn... Oh, they're going to be doing a debuff. That's really unfortunate for us. So I didn't want to split them that turn because I had three stacks of vulnerability on me, which meant that if I split them that turn, next turn they would uh, debuff themselves as well as... Sorry, uh, purge themselves as well as buff themselves. And then the turn after, I would still have one vulnerability and they would hit me with Execute. So I'm trying to line this up so that Execute doesn't hit me so hard. Unfortunately, they just face slapped, so I've now got more vulnerability on me, so... It's not exactly going in my direction right now. Alright, I need to break you next turn. Hopefully you don't face slap. No, that's that's going to be a debuff on us. That's really awful. Alright, now it's a damage race. I would poison potion, but... That does 6 damage this turn, then no damage next. Oh no, because they weren't split yet! Damn it. Okay, I definitely should have poison potioned. Now it does 6 damage this turn, then no damage next turn, or 6 damage this turn instead, so... Um, yeah, it feels like this one's going to be a loss as well. So we die to the first hit. No, we die to the second hit. Okay, we did. And goodbye champ. Exhume? Not really. There's nothing there that we actually really want, especially because we can't upgrade them. Uh, Curse and Key. Gain energy at the start of each of your turns. Whenever you open a non-boss chest, obtain a curse. Huge for us. Absolutely huge for us. Uh, a couple copies of Battle Trance would be insane. Definitely looking out for those. I probably want to hit a path with a lot of rests. Not for upgrades, but just so that I can kind of take a breath. Relax. Maybe rest a little. I know! They said I never would. Rage is really good in a deck like this. It's a bunch of block because our deck is mostly attacks. Alright. Unfortunately, the rage isn't upgraded, but... I mean... It worked out, but we still ended up taking a lot of damage there. I'm going to throw the Poison Potion, end this fight immediately. Oh no, the Aura Calcum trigger at the very end was going to do that anyway. Uh, that's my bad. I'll take Metallicize, just more triggers of the... Juggernaut. Uh, Chemical X, the effects of your x cost cards are increased by 2, as well as Whirlwind. I mean, it's kind of brainless, we just do that, definitely. Lose the 3 max HP. If I can upgrade that Whirlwind at all, it's going to be huge. So now it's 
eight eight by six eight by six is 56 so i can do 56 damage this turn i drew before i played juggernaut here uh the reason oh, i should have used the strikers though as well that turn that's my bad uh but i drew before i played juggernaut because i wanted to draw armaments and then use the armaments to upgrade the juggernaut Taking our first hit this turn, no matter what. Oh god, this is really bad. Oh, this is a lot of incoming damage this turn. I don't like it. Don't really have too much of a choice about that turn. Kind of just play it straight. Take a second copy of Armaments, pre-upgraded. Hell yes. Uh... I'm going to rest here, get back to as much HP as I possibly can before I take this elite. I can dodge all elites this floor. No, but I do want more combat so that I can get more copies of... I'm actually just going to Juggernaut first turn. Hopefully I don't end up regretting this. Um, <clears throat> so they can get more copies with strikes. Hopefully perfected strikes. I'm amazed that we've gotten so few of those so far. Okay. Full block right there. Yeah, that could have got a lot worse. We are getting a lot of damage right now out of the combination of Juggernaut as well as Rage. Super happy to see it. All right. I'm just going to recall the Ruby Key. Give me another bone. If your HP is at or below 50% at the end of combat, heal for 12 HP. Neat. Yeah, I can toke to remove two curses from my deck in upcoming spaces. We're fine. Yep. I, I don't need to use a strike here. I don't want to change their intent to something that might possibly be worse. That said, it pays off a lot to do it right now. Okay. Still reasonable. And that's a totally fine attack. I don't want to change your intent yet again. Same, same again. I don't think I can kill this turn. So the question becomes, how little damage can I take this turn? I'm twice. That's 18. The enemy is on 28 right now. Never mind. I can kill exactly. Uh, wall strike. Some more instantaneous damage for us. Bad in the long run, but good in the short run. I'm fine with that. Yeah, definitely want to hit another block there so that I get to retain my buffer. Sweet. Come on, 45 me. Damn. To this day, hasn't 45 to me. Do so you get to block seven right there and then follow up with the kills, so... It's all working out fine. Bottle Flame. Upon pick up, choose an attack. Slightly combo of that card in your opening hand. Um, I don't know. Whirlwind? Yeah.
obviously not great in this scenario. Got the draw, and now I know that Juggernaut is actually what I want to play by itself. Taking a bunch of damage playing it there. Just a patently ridiculous amount. Damn, frailty follow up. Okay, from now on out, I should just be able to wait. Play maybe one defend each turn. Or none. None defend works too. More block. And end the turn, get the kill. Easy. Damn it. Not really getting as many strikes here as I was hoping. Let's remove that decay. Hopefully, not need to rest after this fight, but hey, if I do need to, it's fine. See, if only I had that card upgraded. If only. Got it to be potent. I have to take the Pommel Strike. And in this position, I'd love to upgrade the Pommel Strike, but I can't really. I guess I just want to remove another card from the deck. What do I remove, though? I think it's the Ghostly Armor. Let's make a slightly smarter decision there. Because I've just remembered that the defends are less than the ghostly armor and I still have defense. Armaments. Moment. Believe it or not, that is why I put the whirlwind in my opening hands so that I would have the ability to kill all of those chomps instantly. Worked out perfectly. Neat. Do need to get my powers out here. If only to stop them clogging up my deck. Unfortunately, I don't need to get my wild strike out, so I don't get an extra point of dex that turn. Could have done that in better order. Could have got myself one more HP. Oh, hell yeah. This is great. Huge amount of damage. Huge amount of defense. It's exactly what this deck is working towards. That was basically this deck at its highest aspiration. Feel like I might end up needing the power potion. None of those are good enough to consider playing here. You buff the enemy to do it at least. And we're dead. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. What could I have even gotten from the power? Like, it would be Barricade, basically, is the only thing that I want to play. But even then, it's way too late. So it would have been on the turn that the Awakened One died, play the Power Potion, get the Barricade. That's the only out I really had there. Other than that, it would be have more defense in the deck, but we did pick up a lot of defense, right? We also did cut a lot of defense in those defends, but they were really, really underperforming, and we didn't get enough decks in a standard combat for them to be effective by the time they came out. Another copy of Rage would have really done this deck. Like, huge work. Oh. Here we go. And that's our body committed to the soil. A little bit more max HP, and we also would have been able to take that one down. Um, 
a couple more copies of Perfected Strike, obviously, considering that I drafted it immediately and then never found another Perfected Strike the entire time, despite it being a common card. But, eh, that happens. Constantly. That said, when it doesn't happen, you get a really cool Perfected Strike game. So that almost got over Ascension 15 there. For the moment, though, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay This Mine. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.